Ah, Gundam. It's been so long. What? What are these numbers? Oh yeah. The Western movies. So that old one has some outdated information, but that's okay. We'll revamp some things. We'll work on it from there. I'm going to assume you've watched the previous one. If you haven't, at least check it out to know some of the fundamentals. Alright, let's get started. So you log in, and you open up the store wondering, Hey, what kind of cool suit can I get today? Then you're greeted with a daunting list of mobile suits, a lot of them locked away. Where do I start, you might ask yourself. Well, I'll try to break down some of the more meta suits, and why they're good. I won't be talking about suits that are higher to buy than Lance Corporal, because these are all budget or welfare suits for new players. For 200, you'll want to do all of your training. Invest in a bazooka. The Hyper Bazooka and the Zaku Bazooka will pay off in the long run. After finishing training, you'll receive the GM Trainer for free. It is, at this time, the meta blue suit for 200s. The Trainer sports two swings with its melee. People have asked before, and swinging twice is a skill only SOME mobile suits have. It's called the Melee Combo Controller. It also has the Balancer skill, which lets you cancel boosts into melee. It also has an emergency dodge. It sports no shield at all, but it is very mobile. Your typical loadout will be the Hyper Bazooka over anything else, and your typical bread and butter combo will be Rocket, Neutral Melee into Back Melee, cancel out of that, Backswing or Grenade depending on the situation. Sometimes you can fit in two swings while they're on the ground. Really depends on the situation. The ground GM follows after. It is very similar to the trainer with loadout, but it has a shield. It needs its own bazooka though, it doesn't use the hyper bazooka. It is stronger, but has less rounds. It comes with a skill that enhances your tackle's damage, and its bread and butter combo is very similar to the trainer. It lacks the melee controller though, so you can't swing twice. Another solid blue suit is the Zaku 2 FS. It is harder to use than the other ones. It doesn't have a roll, and it's heat hawk, it's harder to land than a beam saber. It needs to invest in the Zaku Bazooka, which will carry over to other Zakus, so it's not a bad investment. The lack of a roll comes with a different ability, called Maneuver Armor, letting you tank shots without being stunned. It can be broken, and you've gotta be boosting to use that skill, but it allows you to close the gap in melee. It has a larger loadout than the other two, with four weapons rather than three, and the bread and butter being similar to the previous. Vulcans can be used while boosting. The suit comes with a huge asterisk though, because I don't really trust new players to be good at it, but it's a good suit to learn. Personally, I don't feel as the GM Kai deserves to be here, because its best rocket is locked behind another mobile suit. If you do wish to use it, it is similar to the ground type except it lacks the enhanced tackle. To make up for that, it has a bigger shield. It has Vulcans instead of grenades, but grenades hit harder than Vulcans do. You can use the GM Kai in space though. Next in line is the only red that matters in this cost, the GM Light Armor. Reasoning behind it is, despite the Zaku one having a bazooka, it lacks maneuver armor, making it harder to use and harder to close the gap than the Light Armor. The Act Guy isn't very strong, but it's good for messing around in. It too lacks maneuver armor, but instead comes with a roll. Its weapon loadout is pretty lackluster, and its melee damage is pretty weak in comparison to the other two. It comes with stealth though, but there are some suits that have anti-stealth, negating the whole gimmick. Back to the light armor. The light armor gets two swings at 200, and three at 250. Its main weapon is the stripped beam rifle. It packs a punch, more so than the other beam guns. They suck. It also comes with the handy dandy grenade. Combos are similar to the previous, but it's a little more dangerous to pull off for a new person, as it's tough to work up to because of the lack of a standard stagger. The beam rifle can pull off a small stagger, but that's if you keep up your fire. Lastly for the 200 cost is the premier yellow, the Zaku Cannon. The Zaku Cannon does take a bit of an investment though as you have to buy up to the level 3 to get it in 200s. Why the Zaku Cannon over the GM, you might ask? The beam spray gun is bad. 
And while the 100mm machine gun might outrange the MMP-80, the MMP-80 will out-DPS it with the fire rate. Now, the GM cannon can go to space while the Saku cannon cannot, so the GM cannon becomes the designated space yellow, unless you rolled a better one. The Zaku-1 commander is rank locked and the Gigan is gotcha locked. When using the Zaku cannon, you need to have no fear. You want to be aggressive, because if you're passive, you're not making full use out of your DPS. The Zaku cannon doesn't really have a designated bread and butter combo, because you shouldn't be meleeing unless you're forced to, so just keep popping cannon shots, keep shooting your gun, and you're probably wondering what the hell did the smokescreen even do? It cloaks you on radar for a short amount of time, or until you shoot. You can use it to sneak up on enemies. Alright, next tier, 250s. The previous can be upgraded to be cost effective in this bracket. New options open up here, though. We'll be looking at three new suits. They're all blues. First up is the Zaku Kai, because it's free for everyone. Without a bazooka, it's still a decent suit, but it's not spectacular. It'll teach you weapon swapping better, as it has access to four weapons at default. You'll be wanting to use both your bread and butter, similar to the other blues, with the grenade launcher to engage. But keeping a small gap between you and your enemy to fire your machine gun safely. When you have downtime, or targets around corners, you should just throw your grenade. Next up is the X-Meta Champion, before they decided to rearrange some of its stats. Despite its really low health pool, this bad boy has two swings, a shield, and a dodge roll, making it the GM Trainer 2.0 despite coming out before the trainer. It lacks a grenade, but it remains one of the better blues before falling off in 350s. If you can play the other blues that came in the list before this one, you can play this one just fine. The space version is similar, but the melee and range stats are swapped around. There are a lot of people who use that version with the bullpup, which is a perfectly fine choice. But the bazooka will still beat it out in space, because... melee. Space is pretty melee heavy now, ever since they changed it, but, you know... Whatever, you can make anything work in space, really. The next suit comes with an extreme asterisk, even bigger than the FS. It's the GM Cold Climate type. It has a fast spraying submachine gun with a grenade launcher. It lacks a roll and is very, very fragile to melee. You should rarely be in melee range. I only put it here because I think it teaches people spacing better. It's not an exceptional suit, but it's a solid suit, and it needs to be played with proper spacing to get the most amount of damage from it. It has a very low melee stat, but still has balancer. So if you need to, grenade into backswing. Your submachine gun will be your primary damage, and when you have downtime on that, you are using your Vulcans. The suit's focus should be on melting reds and spacing blues. 300s things open up some more. Previous suits still work, and new suits appear for budget boys. Most blues will end up with the same skills at this cost, two swings and a roll, and in this cost, we end up with three blues and two yellows. From here you might be wondering, wait, there's still no Zuda? Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. I left that out. Here's why. The Zuda is a strong red, but it lacks balancer to make effective use of the bazooka, and the ASR takes a little bit of learning. It's an investment for it too, as there are only two suits that can use it, and one of the suits is locked behind Gacha. So I can't really say the ASR is budget friendly enough to matter. The Zuda is good, but people are poor. The Striker is still ass though. You might have noticed that the rank requirements are going up, which is true. For some reason, they don't want newer people playing higher costs, unless you roll for it. From outrageous prices to high rank requirements, the Kai, Light Armor, Zaku Cannon, and GM Ground type can proceed at a decent ranking, but the commands in Cold District get locked behind Corporal. So we open up this bracket with the first Meta King, the boy who dominated the game for so long. The Dom. 
buying the Dom will give you the giant bazooka for use on some other mobile suits. I think this suit is very important to learn now, as more hover-based suits will start to show up as we make our way to Zeta. This suit is a lot more difficult to control, and you will whiff a lot learning it, from the flash having weird distances to just flat out missing your melee. This suit is like a lot of the other blues. It has a roll, but this one lacks a decent secondary. It has nothing, for damage at least. It has a bazooka, the sword, and a flash. This boy hits hard though, and that's all that matters. You go in, you bazooka, you flash, and you go nuts. The Rickdom version's the space variant, and you gotta buy it separately. Why did you do that? It's so stupid. Next up is the Afrit, a rather unique suit in this cost as it has a shotgun and is played kind of like a red. It's really fragile, but it hits really hard. Its shotgun will break through maneuver armor, it's really good at killing reds. The shotgun has a decent stagger range and it can use a smoke to cloak. It's great at ambushing, but like I said, it's fragile. It is mobile and the bread and butter combo is a little bit different and requires you to have some more ammo. You open with your shotgun into neutral melee, into back melee into shotgun into neutral or back depending on the situation and your timing. You can use the Vulcans to chase or run away, whatever, it's up to you. It's Vulcans. I wasn't sure whether to add this suit or not, but I decided to go with it, the high mobility Zaku. The difference is, is you need that simplified missile launcher. This is another more ranged oriented suit, but it has a low melee stat. It has three ranged weapons, its primary, a grenade, and a Zaku machine gun with a fuckload of ammo. As it is, the high mode can be used in a variety of ranges, but it excels in more mid-range combat. The missile launcher will burn all four rockets when you fire, but you can cancel out of it by just swapping weapons. Just try not to shoot your teammates. Here's a yellow that was so strong in its cost that it got the weapon toned down, the Zaku-1 sniper. I know, I know. Most people want to use that beam sniper rifle. Don't. Despite its nerf, the Magella Top Cannon is the best weapon for this suit. It has a hard stagger, meaning the stagger is longer than a regular stagger. Its range was nerfed, but it's not that bad. The splash was nerfed, so just hit people, don't splash them. If you can land your shots well, you can play this suit at long range or mid range. It has a toolkit that lets you play aggressive with the Sturmfaust. Last one here is a very aggressive suit. I don't care if you want to sit in the back with it. Don't. Also, don't use the rocket launcher on it. It doesn't have balancer to make good use out of it. The GM Sniper Custom can go one of two ways. You can use the regular sniper rifle, you walk up to people and just shatter their legs in front of them, and then, you know, just pew pew the pistol, whatever. Or, you can use the double beam gun on it and play a mid-range and shatter their legs. The idea behind the suit is just to constantly pump out damage because it has this really aggressive toolkit of just everything is shooting. Just keep shooting. You're really mobile. Just keep shooting! It has a unique backswing and a unique counter, which which actually does more damage than a regular generic counter. So all those unique counters get cool shit. Whatever. What about the free suits like the Gun Cannon MP and the Ground Gundam? Okay, okay, those aren't really budget friendly though, because those who join after this event can't get them for free. I'll do a quick rundown on them. The gun cannon mass production type is a mid-range aggressive yellow, as it needs to be pumping out damage with its dual machine guns rather than the bullpup. It is a very solid yellow though. I know the 2x is locked behind corporal, so the bullpup isn't that bad. It's just not as good, because it doesn't stagger as fast. It's not a very complicated suit, just play it like the Zaku cannon. The ground gundam, just don't use the beam rifle. Like, okay, I'm gonna put it in giant comic sans. Just don't. The charge is way too slow to make effective use out of it, and 
with the rocket, you can, you can pretty much stunlock somebody really fast. It's played like most other blues, except it has a flash bomb. The flash bomb is when somebody rolls out of your combo, or if you want, you can use it to engage as well. That's about it. You rocket, you knock them down, get them while they're on the ground, they get up, flash them or rocket them, depending on the situation. Whatever. They're not gonna roll out of it. Wow, we wow, wow, we're here at 350. It's the last one before a bunch of boys get fucked and get locked out because of rank requirements. Because everything is going to be corporal or higher after this. So your budget suits for today are the same as ever. You know, your GM command is locked behind corporal. Previous stuff still carries over. Blah blah blah. Four suits this time. First off is, I was so strong before they nerfed my backswing. The easy man himself. It's a ground Gundam without the flash. It's played pretty similarly. You know, like all the other blues with their rockets. One major difference is, is the backswing. It'll launch you a distance. It does a fuck ton of damage. And you have high melee priority. Oh yeah, melee priority, that's a thing. I'll talk about that later. This isn't a meta blue anymore, but it's still very strong. Finally, another Zeke suit. Can't believe most of this is fed shit. Well, deal with it. The Gelgoog is a great all-rounder. It has a lot of health, it's a really good beam rifle that does a ton of damage, and it does a ton of damage uncharged too. It comes with grenades and a strong melee. One downside. The melee takes a bit of getting used to. It arcs weird. It's the same as other blues. Target a beam rifle for a stun, melee, drop a grenade, or melee again, whatever. It is weak to melee though. Watch out. Here we go, finally another yellow. Is it the gun tank? No, hell no. Fuck no. Because I wouldn't trust a new person in the gun tank. It takes a little bit of map knowledge and positioning to understand how it works. That and a lot of weapon swapping. It's the fun cannon. The meta yellow before the ground gun from weapon rack came out. Sporting a uh, hot five weapons. Wow, five. The gun cannon can be played long range and mid range. The pilot needs to learn how to quick swap because you're going to be using cannon to beam rifle. That's pretty much all you do. You can throw grenades when you're overheated, if you're overheated, or if you're reloading. It's great at shattering legs. If you get good with the gun cannon, then you can probably mean with the tanks. I can't say my finger guns. Lastly for the reds, it's the Zuda. Now it gets Balancer. It's 350 now though, so now it's outclassed by a lot of things. Oh no. But at this point you'll be using the ASR. Hopefully you have the ASR, but you can always use the bazooka. It's still a strong contender with the ASR, especially if you're aggressive with it. It's Sturmfaust, the ASR, and now you have your melee balancer thing, whatever. You're gonna get fucking destroyed, but no, just you work with what you got sometimes. Bonus Red, the free BD-1 everyone got during the event. The BD-1 is a complicated suit, more so than other Reds in this cost. It has a beam rifle that you should use over the machine gun because it's easier to stun with that. It's head Vulcans and chest Vulcans for chasing, but it also has chest rockets that lock you into place when you use them. That, and it has the exam system. The exam system boosts attack, defense, and speed for one minute. It also gives you a roll. After that minute, your head and legs break. But when you use the exam, your head and legs repair. Can't use the exam if your head is broken though. The combo is a little bit more complicated than other suits I've talked about. Charged beam rifle into standing rockets, into your melee combo, into one beam shot, into your sub melee combo. The BD-1 has great mid-range and close range potential, but you should be at close range rather than mid. Okay, so what did I mean when I said melee priority when I spoke of it earlier? Well, melee priority is when two people swing at each other at the same time. If you have the same priority, you'll clash and then you'll bounce off each other. If one is higher than the other, that swing will go through the other person's swing and beat the fuck out of them. There is one skill that affects the outcome of that clash and that's... Power Accelerator, I believe? And it lets you attack right after a clash. There are three priorities, high, medium, and low. I'll link the Japanese wiki in the description that has the priorities, just Google Translate it. Let's talk a little bit about positioning. Positioning is very important in a rock, paper, scissors kind of game like this. Blues should form the main line. They are both front and mid line. There are suits that are exceptions, but you are the force that protects your yellows from reds and provides a diversion and support for said reds. 
Then are the reds. You shouldn't have to constantly poke with your weapon because that gives yourself away and makes you a big target. Your job is to break through that scary line of blues and break the yellow. You have maneuver armor and some even have stealth for that reason of piercing through that line. I know sometimes you have no other choice but to fight blues, but you can always disengage. Don't always overcommit your fights, especially as a red. Yellow will generally play back or mid line. Your job is to kill the blues to break that line so your team can advance. Always keep an eye on your radar. If you don't know what red is coming for you, listen, Elador. You can hear them. Oh, damn! My field of vision sucks! Elador! Right here. I want you to take command. You want me to what? There's no way for us to follow his movements out here. I need to depend on your ears. So this is the hangar. Last time I made a video it wasn't open. Well, now it's been open for a while and they don't teach you about it. Most new people don't even know about it. Well, the hangar is where you stick a mobile suit. A mobile suit that you want to upgrade. Upgrading suits take real time. 70 hours. You're locked away from all your slots until one specific rank, then one opens, and then mission medals. How it works is after those 70 hours you'll be granted some points, usually 100, but if you're lucky, 200 or 300. After a set amount of points, your suit will upgrade. This BD1 had 490 till the first upgrade, then 990 for the second, so on and so forth. You don't want to wait, you can spend mechanic tickets and it'll speed up the progress, but the only way of getting tickets is getting dupe, suits, and weapons. Some, some gold tickets from completing your monthly missions. Speaking of monthlies, monthly missions. Yeah, that's a thing. Monthly missions are a new addition, you know, after I made that other video. They give significant bonuses that stack with your daily missions. It is possible to get the gold medal without spending a dime, so you can work hard at it. Then you get more container drops, more XP, more money, more hangar slots, and more recycle shop items because you get more recycle shop options when you have more better metal things. You can use your metal before sorting every day. It refreshes every day. Bronze gets one, silver gets two, gold gets three. Oh yeah, the extra addition of clans. Clans. There's no downside to joining a clan. There are only upsides, so join an active clan at the clan camp. Then every time your clan levels up, you get 10,000 DP and one token. You get clan XP just for playing! And then clan missions arrived, and you can access that on your clan tab, on your Haro. Finishing those will give different rewards up until a token. It's usually DP. That's the different rewards. That's it. That's all the new stuff, I think. I don't know, something could be passing me up. Ha 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 ha. What? What do you mean, space? No. It's... Fuck. Okay. Space is different now. It's really different. Previously, you were only able to go up and down with the rise and descend buttons. But now, now, you can rise and descend depending on where you're aiming. It's a nice change. I don't think I talked about it before, but there were breaks in space. You can tap rise and descend at the same time and you'll stop. But now, with that, Quick turn, so if you input a direction with your aim, left or right, you'll turn left or right really fast. It uses boost, but it gives you maneuver armor. Exploit that, because it's still fucking broken. That's... that's all that's new for space. Also, if you're having trouble buying things from the DP shop, tap L2, look at the rank requirements for it. It's either going to be you're not a high enough rank, or you don't have the money, or you don't have the previous level. That's important too. And then I've also gotten questions on how to start a match. You gotta go to the sortie lady, talk to her. And then the people who say they can't actually ready up. Look at the cost you're in, and then choose the cost of the suit. That makes sense. You can't bring a 400 into a 200. Don't do that. That wastes everybody's time. If you see 200 basic match, that means bring a 200 cost suit to the basic match. Like when you're choosing your suit, hold square and sort it by cost. And then there you go, all your costs are right there, all in order for you, it's perfect. 
so you don't have to waste 20 fucking hours on some guy who won't ready up. Just stop doing that. It's rude.